In this video, I want to talk about Azure Firewall and very specifically the network address translation capability which is available in Azure Firewall and which can be leveraged off the shelf. So network address translation, it's a networking techno terminology, but it's used for different purposes. So there is something called as DNAT, which is destination network address translation. And then there is something called as SNAT. So SNAT stands for source network address translation. And both of these scenarios are more about abstracting the uh, IP address or the network address for the resource by using uh, in this in the current situation we are using a firewall you can do it with other network address translation products available even in azure there is a netting uh, service available which can be utilized for such translation purposes so in today's demo what we will be uh, running through is more around using the same um, sample which I have created in the uh, which I've used in the previous videos for firewall and routing we, I'll be using the same model only difference is we will be focusing on one vnet so in in this situation in this particular uh, session we will have we will be dealing with just the virtual network one vnet one and we will be having a vm vm one and that will be on inside that uh, vnet under the subnet one and on the other side, we have some users who will be trying to RDP on this machine and there is a public IP address for this VM as well. So in a conventional world, when you create a VNet and you have a subnet and you create a VM inside it, you can use uh, the public IP capability, PIP, which is public IP address. Uh, capability uh, or a service in Azure and then you can connect that public IP address with your VM and once that IP is connected then you can basically access that VM through an RDP connection from your local machine from anywhere using the internet <clears throat> obviously this all can be blocked using NSGs and there are different security options but yeah fundamentally if you have created a vanilla, vanilla machine with all the basic networking things without any specific NSG configuration that machine is available and accessible over the internet but in a production scenario you will never try to do this because it's pretty much unsafe and insecure for your machine if it is directly open on the internet so what you do is there is normally a technique which is more about jump box concept so what you do is you pay, you follow the hub and spoke model so you have a hub and you have the spoke so spoke is where your vm is sitting inside the vnet and you have a separate vnet which is called the hub vnet and inside that you have your firewall and you have your jump box so the user will basically come through the jump box and then he will be taken to the specific vm and the jump box and the entire network uh, communication which is happening will be all be monitored by azure firewall but the only thing which uh, additional you are having over here is you have a separate jump box which is just like a dump box doing nothing else just letting the user to access the relevant resources which obviously is an additional cost for any organization and obviously if you have different networks and different accessibility access capabilities on those networks then you might have to have go with more than one jump boxes per, per vnet or based on the number of users who want to access your resources you might have to scale this up which obviously is an additional cost without any additional value coming out of it. So that's where Azure Firewall can be used to leverage the NATing capability. So in this situation, what we will be doing is we will be using the Azure Firewall DNAT capability. So destination network address translation. The reason why we are using the DNAT capability is because at the end of the day, Azure Firewall be, will be providing a public IP address. So similar to what we did with VM, where we created a VM and attached a public IP address, same goes with the uh, firewall so once the firewall is created you can uh, you get a public ip address for the firewall as well now what the user will be experiencing in this situation is he will be coming to the internet but that traffic will be routed to the firewall and in the firewall we will be making that configuration that once the request comes to the firewall on a specific public ip, public IP address on a specific port we will basically point that request to a specific private IP address inside the network and that private IP address will be the IP address of our VM which is uh, in this situation 172.18.04 and that's that's where we will be routing the traffic so 172.17.14 is the 
private IP address of the firewall and 104.209.73.170 is the public IP address of the firewall. So in a, in a regular configuration, uh, that's that's where you can, once you provision a VM, you directly can access it. But yeah, to make it secure without any additional jump box capability, you can use the firewall to do all the magic for you as well. So now this is all I have on the presentation side. Let's go into the portal and see the experience first time. So let me open the portal. So just to uh, rewind back what we talked. So we have a hub firewall. So I have a resource group. And inside that resource group, I have a firewall. And then I have a spoke uh, route table. I have, this is my VM one, and this is my spoke one. And here is the hub inside which I have the firewall set up. And uh, I also have a couple of route tables. So just to go back into the design. So in order to get this routing uh, happening, uh, or which basically means that nobody should be able to directly come to the VM from the internet and access it. What we do is we follow a specific uh, technology or technique which is called as the post tunneling, which is where we provide a default route and that default route will be pointing to our uh, firewall. So as you can see over here, we have a route table which we have attached to the subnet and then that route table we will be putting the 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 which is the default route and that will be pointing to the firewall 172.17.14 which is this 172.17.14 now what exactly the default route and 0.0.0.0, .0 refers to there is a detailed documentation available in uh, azure vnet area where you can understand about more about these things and i also talked about the on uh, these uh, default route capability in my previous videos if you want to check that as well so once we uh, have done the route table, what will happen is any traffic coming directly to the VM1 will be firstly pushed to the firewall. And if there is no netting configured in the firewall, we, the traffic will be terminated and it will not go anywhere else. So first we, what we will do is we will be, I'll be basically showing you once the VM is set up without any restriction or any default route, the VM should be directly accessible through an RDP. And once I enable the route and I provide the configuration of NATing in my firewall, I should be able to communicate to the VM through the firewall public IP address. So let me go to the portal now. So yeah, we have all those things and also we have the route table. So let me go first over here. Uh, so this is my VM uh, VNet and I have, that's my spoke one, that's my VNet name. Inside that spoke, I have two subnets. So I have a subnet one and subnet two. Inside the subnet one, uh, I basically have a route table RT, a spoke one RT. And inside the subnet one, I also have my virtual machine. So if I, and this is my virtual machine VM one. And if I come inside the virtual network, I can see this is inside the spoke one and that's inside the subnet one. And this uh, IP address of this particular uh, machine is internal IP address or private IP address is 172.18.04 and that's a public IP address. So what I'll do is I'll basically try to connect to this machine using an RDP connection. So let me open RDP uh, on my local machine. I'll put the IP address and then I'll put the credentials. And as you can see, it's pretty much very straightforward. I was able to log in uh, RDP on this machine and the machine is totally accessible. So what I'll do now is I'll keep the connection active and I'll go back into the Azure portal and inside my uh, specific route table, as you can see at this stage uh, in the route table, I just have a route and which is for my previous sessions, which I talked about where I had spoke one, spoke two different spokes uh, for my hub and spoke model. So that's the route where I was able to, I was connecting my spoke one to spoke two so that the VMs can talk to each other. The only thing which we will be doing over here is uh, we will be adding this default route so that all the traffic which comes to the on this particular network, VNet, uh, gets uh, diverted to firewall and if it is verified and it's legit uh, certified at the firewall level then it will be coming to the specific resource in this network so let me add a specific uh, 
in detail entry for uh, for our uh, route table so what i'm saying is i have this is my vnet spoke one and that's the subnet one and that's the internet traffic so that's the any traffic which is coming from the internet or it is not uh, uh, in the internal vnet traffic it will be considered for this particular route so 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 slash 0 so that that includes and what i need to do is next hop should be my virtual net appliance so that's my virtual appliance and the ip address of that virtual appliance is uh let me see the ip address so this can go to the firewall and the ip address should be 172.17.14 that's my ip address Come back over here so 172.17.172.17.14 perfect and i'll basically say okay so this would basically add additional route in my route table and uh, yeah so i have got an additional route so now if i come over here in this rdp session and it takes a couple of seconds before this uh, route table change effect would be visible so it will and and what that result will be uh, once the effect is enforced on the network i should be kicked out of this particular uh, connection because this connection is directly running through the internet and as i said uh, by default you can access through the internet but once you have enabled this default route all the traffic which will be requested for any resource in this vnet first that traffic will be diverted to firewall and if there is a routing uh, details for that particular incoming request then it will be taken to a relevant resource otherwise that traffic will be terminated over here so if i come back over here so as you can see my traffic which was like connection directly to the through the internet to my rdp machine has been terminated now by the firewall so I'll just cancel this. Now coming to the firewall, uh, I'll just open the different uh, rules we have. So we have netting rules, we have network rule collection, application rules. I've already discussed about these things in my previous video. I would appreciate, uh, would highly recommend you can go and verify this and then check in uh, if you haven't checked yet. So let's talk about the netting rule which we have. So what I have in the netting, I have already configured netting rule and as you can see what I have done very simply, I have added um, the RDP for VM1 which again happens through a protocol, TCP protocol I have selected, source type, IP address, uh, I have just made, just made any. You can define your specific IP range over here if you have one. Destination IP address is basically the IP address of my firewall. So that's 104.209.73.170. So let me show you the firewall. So that's 104.209.73 and 170. So let me go into the firewall and if i open the firewall public ip address so that's 104.209.73.170 so that's my public ip address of the firewall and if i go back into the rules so that's the ip address of the firewall but you need to be very specific that i'm talking on port 3389 so if i use 3389 any incoming request on that should be basically translate uh, translated to this address which is 172.18.04 port 3389 which is the rdp port so if i go to vm1 so that's 172.18.04 that's the ip address of my vm1 so that's already configured i'll just save that and now if i uh, once it is saved what i'll do is i'll basically use the ip address of the firewall so i'll check this and then I'll, I'll do the similar sort of things remote RDP session so that's good and let's say oh, not this one yep it's a 3389 so as you can see this is the public IP address of my firewall and just I've added the port 3389 so it's asking for the credential I'll do that so now uh, I should be able to yep so it did allow me access to the specific machine and if I go and check the name of this machine so you can see it's VM1 so when I use the public IP address of this VM VM1 I am not allowed to access it 
and that's because there is this default route which is all the traffic comes to the network default route pushes it to the firewall firewall just stops the traffic if there is no rule defined and if there is a rule defined then it will take the traffic to my specific vm which is happening over here so i am using the ip address of my firewall uh, on a specific port and that particular ip address is translated using the nat natting capability of firewall and it is then sent to my internal ip address or private ip address of this vm so in a nutshell this is a very straightforward and simple way how you can do uh, natting on your environment without using any additional component or any additional service just the firewall because firewall itself you are only paying for it why not to use uh, the capabilities which are all available off the shelf in the firewall so hope this video was helpful and please give a like if you like the video and thanks a lot for listening